there is, a, there is a theme in all three of her books, and it seems like you have something to say about it. And that's um, legacy, family inheritance. It's, it's almost as though we're, pre, we're predestined to behave in certain ways by, not just genetically, but by who our, our parents are, who our grandparents are, and of course in your first book, who our great, 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 great grandparents are. So you have a lot to say about um, what makes us who we are based on our ancestry. I think that every book that's ever been written is probably concerned with what makes us who we are and, and what we do with that, whether we, or to what extent we are capable of doing anything with that. Um, if our pasts, our histories are our destinies or if we can um, choose a different path. Um, I think that Eating Animals, the nonfiction book, was very much about the same things. In fact, in certain ways, more directly about those themes. Like, you know, we inherit cultures, we inherit rituals, we inherit habits, and they are very difficult to escape. Um, and, and similarly, they're difficult to, it's difficult sometimes to recognize the value of them, because we might have a reflex to escape, especially when we're, you know, in our teens or in our 20s. So that kind of wrestling match of um, finding what it is that um, facilitate, allows you to be yourself. You know? And sometimes what allows you to be yourself, there's a, a misconception that I know I had when I was younger. I thought freedom was what it was that would allow me to be myself, as few constraints as possible. But it's just not altogether true. Sometimes ritual allows you to be yourself. Sometimes being um, being confined or having a structure, in any case, allows you to be yourself. Um, it's one of the things that is quite rich about Judaism. You know, the things that it compels you to do that you wouldn't choose to do, and yet having done them, you realize you would have, you wish you were the person who would have chosen them, or you would have chosen them if you had known about them sufficiently, or um, they, there's, there's a wonderful um, uh, Borges story where he talks about two kings, I think. I read this an awful long time ago. But they have a competition for who can create a labyrinth that's harder to escape. And so King A puts King B in this you know, football field size maze with all these forking paths and dead ends. And, um, and it takes King B whatever, 48 hours to get out of it. And then King B puts King A in the middle of a desert and says, try to get out of this. You know, without constraints, there's no, there's no way out, actually. There is no freedom, if everything is freedom. Uh, Joseph Brodsky, the poet, said that the rhyme is smarter than the poet. And people write in verse both because it's very pretty, it's nice, it sounds good, but also because when you have to end a line with one that rhymes, a word that rhymes with the um, end of the line above, you have a problem, and the solution to the problem can allow you oftentimes to transcend your own limitations, your own creative limitations, your own empathic limitations. So um, that's a roundabout way of saying this is something that I have wrestled with in my life and in my writing life, to whatever extent those things are distinct. Um, you know, how free do I want to be? It's something I think about an awful lot as a parent because, you know, um, parents are constantly creating structures for kids. You know, the obvious ones are rules, but it's not just rules. It's the structures of a familial culture. All right, let's move to here I am. Um, when you sat down and started working on the book, did you know what it was going to become? I don't even know what it is. Not, not only did I... <laughs> Not only did I not know what it was going to become, I don't know what it is. I don't think of books in that way. I don't think of them as, I'm not even sure how I would answer the question, what is it? I know that it is some kind of record of my thoughts and feelings over the course of, a, let's say, four years. It, it, did, it was 11 years between when one book was published and the other, but realistically, I only really worked on this for about three and a half or four years. And I think it's an, it is a kind of portrait of my sensibility during that, that period of time. I've always had this kind of voice in my head 
when, Finally. When I write, <laughs> saying, um, try hard, because this, this is the last thing you'll ever write. And I don't, I don't, it's not meant in the sense that I'm going to die anytime soon. It's not meant in the sense that I won't write another book. But in a very straightforward way, the person that I am will not write another book. And I know this because when I look at the books I wrote in the past, I did write them, obviously I did. My name is on the cover, my younger image of myself is somewhere in there, but I don't feel a strong connection to them. I don't feel a strong connection to the person who wrote them. Um, I mean, if you think about yourselves 15 years ago, who was you? There are photographs of you, you remember the experiences, but if you feel like a witness to that younger self. And I know that in five years, I will look at this and feel the same way. I'll feel like, well, I wouldn't really do it that way anymore, or I've moved on to something else, or this is really what, I'm, what fascinates me now, what I care about now. Um, so I try when I'm writing, knowing that I won't have another chance to state for myself primarily, and then maybe for others, but really for myself, I won't have another chance to state who I am at that time. Um, I, it inspires a certain kind of care. Yet have, I just heard what you said, and then I look at the title of the book, which is Here I Am. And you're saying here I am at that time, and of course, those of us who went to Hebrew school and got bar mitzvah remember um, where Here I Am is from, Hineni in Hebrew. And why did you call the book that? Well, I had a very hard time titling this book. Um, but th this is your title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, I'm not sure I knew actually when I went to Hebrew school what Hineni was, but um, it, in the, one of the most well-known stories in Genesis, which is really one of the most well-known stories across cultures, the binding of Isaac, it begins, and then God put Abraham to the test. He said, Abraham, Abraham said, Hineni, here I am. And God said, I need you to sacrifice your beloved son. And that he, there are a lot of ways to read the test. The most obvious one is that to sacrifice the son. But another way is, is simply how will you respond when I call to you. And then God put Abraham to the test. He said, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. And he responds with just a full, unconditional presence. And then a few sentences later, when Abraham is leading Isaac up Mount Moriah for the sacrifice, and Isaac senses that something is strange because they have all the materials for the sacrifice but not an animal, Isaac says, my father, and Abraham says, here I am, Hineni, again. It's a, a word that's only used a few times in, in the Torah. And that resonance or that echo is really beautiful and because of how it's paradoxical. You, know, you cannot be fully present without any conditions or reservations for God who wants you to kill your son while being fully present without conditions or reservations for your son who doesn't want to be killed. And that idea, I mean, not, nobody in this room experiences like, paradoxes of identity in that dramatic a way, but everybody knows what they're like. You know, I am here instead of being with my kids because my professional life asks something of me and my life as a parent asks something of me. And in this case, I had to borrow from one and give to the other. It took me 11 years to write another novel because I gave an awful lot to my kids that I would otherwise have given to my professional life. People feel the kind of friction between, or some people do, between religious values and secular values. Some people feel it between being a spouse and being an individual in the world, or be, and being a spouse and being a parent. And um, you know, for most of us, most of the time, it's perfectly fine. It's not so painful or destructive, but sometimes things, something will happen that compels an ultimate statement of identity. You know, here I am at the expense of this other identity. And I organized this book around two of those events. One of them is a, an affair, a discovered affair, and the other is uh, an earthquake in the Middle East which precipitates a war that becomes so dire that the Prime Minister of Israel asks um, all Jews around the world to come to Israel to fight for its survival. Writing for me is not a particularly intellectual activity. It's much more of a visceral and expressive activity. Um, one of my favorite sayings about writing is a bird is not an ornithologist. It's not really about writing, it's just, it's about a lot of things. 
But just because you do the thing doesn't mean that A, you could explain how you do it, or B, that you even intend to do it, choose to do it, or want to do it. So, you know, the, uh, uh, it's not to say that the end of the book doesn't have meaning. And I, I think it does. And I like thinking about what the meaning is, and I would love having a conversation with you about it. But that's not the same thing as asking what it was that I was trying to do or what I intended with it. Um, when I start intending things, it becomes dead to me because it loses the life of kind of resonating. It, it becomes much, something much closer to journalism or rhetoric than art. And the point of art, for me, is something that can maintain, um, can have, it, it can have like an elusive quality. My, you know, when, when, I, when I read something, I have to believe that it means something. You know, if, if I were to read that scene and think, I don't know, it just seems kind of flaky or empty or airy, or I don't believe that the author um, had anything inside of him or her, um, then, it, then it has no value. But if I know exactly what the meaning of it is, if it's like a kind of heavily, heavy-handed symbol or um, an over-articulated theme, it just like doesn't mean that much to me, or it will, it will mean something to me while I read it, and then I'll stop thinking about it, I'll put it on the shelf, and I'll move on to the next thing. But if I believe that it has meaning, but I can't quite grasp it myself, if only like my fingerprints can touch it, that's really rich. And I love continuing to think about things. That's, that's what I seek, is an experience that continues after the last word. You know, the hardest thing about writing, I find, is not actually writing something good, but knowing what good even would mean. You know? that struggle to find value in, in writing. It's not at all obvious what would make a piece of writing good. It's obvious what would make a piece of writing suspenseful. It's obvious what would make a piece of writing moving or interesting. But as I was saying before, those don't feel like enough for me. Um, so I, when, you're, when you're done with something, do you say, oh yeah, this is good? Because I have to say, when I'm done, I have no clue whether I, it's I, good or not. I, what I say is... When I'm done with the first draft. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think what I say is, I cared about this as much at the end as I did at the beginning, and that, that's my idea of good. So there's no referent in the world. A Nobel Prize is not a referent. It's, you know, a film being made of your book is not a referent. Um, even somebody coming up and saying, this book really changed my life, or moved me, is not an external referent, or it shouldn't be. But, um, oh, uh -oh. I, I might be a little shallower than you are. <laughs> I know those things can feel great, but they're not, that doesn't make it good. Like, what, for me, what makes it good is caring over time. And it's also what's very hard. It's hard about books. It's hard about jobs. It's hard about relationships. It's hard about everything. It's hard to care as much at the end as you did at the beginning. Um, and so finding ways to, for the care to be flexible you know, for the project to change as it needs to in response to, to my own changes, for me to change in response to the book, for my definitions of what is, you know, for my, for my sense of value or what's significant or what's rich to me to change, it has to all be quite flexible, which is part of why I really avoid that rigidity that we were talking about earlier of having a plan and fulfilling it or having something I want to say and saying it. I could never sustain my care over the time necessary to write a book if it were that approach.